Welcome to this meeting that we have organized within the European project Airinbet. Before we begin, please note that this session will be recorded. The only purpose of the recording is to use it within the Erasmus Plus Airinbet project scope. If anyone has any concern about being recorded, please turn off your cameras. As most of you already know, the aim of Airinbet project is the promotion of applied innovation and research in vocational education and training for SMEs and industry. With this, with this objective in mind, we are organizing a series of webinars or interventions with the aim to present the applied innovation and research system that each country has. In this first intervention, we will get to know the BET system of the Basque country and the applied innovation and research system that we have in order to support SMEs. This session is organized by Tenica, IMH and AFM. I'm going to share you now the agenda of uh, today's meeting. Please let me share it. OK, so first of all, Ricardo La Madrid from the Basque government will explain the existing education and industry policies for applied research projects in, uh, projects in the Basque country. Then Pili Alonso from Tecnica will describe us the Basque ecosystem on applied research projects. After these two presentations, we will have the opportunity to know real cases. First of all, we will know the case of the company Bronimec. They will tell us about the needs that their company had and how they have collaborated with a vocational training center to solve it. Amaya Castro will be uh, with us from the company Bronimec and Oyer Uriarte will also participate in the presentation as IMH Campus is the best center collaborating with Pronimec. After this company case, we will listen the point of view of a vet training center. To show us this perspective, we will have Miriam Canellada from the Don Bosco Vet Center. She will take, she will talk, sorry, about the management of SME's needs by a vet center. After all these presentations, we will have a one hour break, more or less. And at one o'clock, we will give way to a reflection session led by Inigo Mujica from Tecnica. So now, sorry, so now let's start with the agenda. Let me introduce Ricardo La Madrid, General Director of Technology and Advanced Learning in the Basque government. He will explain us the existing education and industry policies for applied research projects in the Basque country. Please, Ricard, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Josu. Uh, welcome to everybody to to this to this meeting. I I can say I can see. Sorry, uh, all friends of mine, John Edwards. Please, please to see you again. And others. So I will try to explain what what are we doing in the Basque Country. Um, how do we address the applied research and innovation uh, in the VET system? And for for this goal, I will try to share a short presentation. Yes. Can you see the presentation? Yes, can you see the presentation? No, yes. Yes, yeah. we can. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, as Josu has said, I'm Ricardo Lamadrid, the General Director of Technology and Advanced Learning in, in the Basque Government, in the Education Department, and in the Vice Ministry of BET. And uh, of course, I will try to explain what, what are we doing in the field of applied research and, and innovation. Uh, here we have uh, some some data about uh, the surface of the Basque Country. We are a very it's very a very small region with 2.2 uh, million inhabitants. So as you can see, uh, we are qu quite small if we compare it with the with different regions in in Spain of also all around all around Europe. Um, in our case, the 65% of jobs in the bus companies uh, requires a vocational training certificate and is, is a, a key information for us in, here in the Basque country. 
about the the composition of the of the Basque government, we have uh, twelve uh, twelve um, department, different department in the in the Basque government, and all, all of them uh, are, uh, of course, um, uh, they 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 collaborate. Um, so, sorry, I have a problem with my presentation. Excuse me. Um, okay. Sorry, eh? one moment, please. Um, okay, yes. Here in the, you can see um, uh, the 12 different departments that uh, in one sense make up the Basque government. Um, we respond with to the different objectives and different uh, actions that are specified in our government program uh, between or among these 12 di different uh, departments. About our smart specialization strategy, uh, following the guidelines that set by the European Commission, the past government uh, defined it some years ago, each smart specialization strategy, and each of these 12 departments of the past government must contribute to this, to this strategy. That is why the collaboration between the different departments is is, fundament, is a fundamental axis in the here in the Basque country. In the same way, our our six our six B plan, uh, of course, take the this uh, smart specialization, specialization strategy as as a reference. And for the Basque government, the VET department is a key agent for for apply innovation and for apply research um that is the reason why technica is a member of of the basque science technology and innovation innovation network In the next, in the next uh, slide, uh, in the in the largest or the biggest circle, you can see our most important strategic sectors uh, nowadays that uh, are advanced manufacturing, aeronautic, automotive, naval and railway, machine tool, uh, equipment uh, goods, and metallic transformation. And in the next two cycles, cycles. Uh, circles, sorry, uh, you can see another relevant sectors for the for the Basque uh, region, and in the bottom of the in the bottom uh, at the bottom of the slide, you can see our opportunity niches or or emerging sectors for our region, and of course we we are working on this opportunity niches also. What about the, the Ministry of Education? Um, I would like to show you how how we are organized because because the position of VET in this organization is key to understand how strategic VET is for for our government for the Basque government in our region. The VET Vice Ministry is um, at the same level as university or university. Vice Ministry or General Education Vice Ministry, as you can see here in in the in the in the slide. Technica is is a body or an organism attached to the Vice Ministry. In this case, is attached to my general to my general direction. With uh, at Technica, have the objective of coordinating the applied research and innovation strategy of the Vice Ministry of VET. So the uh, Technica also play uh, a key role, plays a key role in uh, spreading the applied research and innovation. And I would like to I would like to highlight 
what I have mentioned there before, just apply research and innovation. Just apply research and innovation, not basic research and innovation, because in the Basque country, we have uh, another agents that are in charge of this uh, basic uh, research, for example, the universities or technological centers or another agents. Okay, here uh, in the 20, 22nd, the Spanish Ministry of Education um, vet published a law that gives us a lot of flexibility to 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 to, to organize or to to design different pathways for all our all our students. Uh, or all our companies, and um, this flexibility gives us a lot of lot of power and also a lot of responsibility. In the other hand, we have the six Basque vet plan that I have mentioned uh, before, and um, of course uh, we are an active part in, in life in line with the Basque country. Uh, Basque Country's Smart Specialization Strategy. Here um, I have a, 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 a small summary of uh, what says this six bed plan, and we have seven strategic oriental approaches. Uh, the first one is the technology digitalization and smart systems. This, the second one is the strategic innovation and disruptive transformation. Smartness, smartness management at uh, 5.0 vet centers. The next one is the biotechnology regeneration and uh, welfare. Uh, the next one is the human development, people as protagonists of the transformation. The, the next one is the smart 5.0 vet centers. We are um, transforming our bed centers in a smart 4.0 bed centers. And the last one, the internationalization of the Basque bed system, because in our case, for the Basque government, the internationalization is also uh, a, a kind of, of, of research of, or of innovation. And in the other hand, we have the 15 intervention areas. And of course, this, this plan is published. We have the English version also. So if you are interested, we have no problem to with pro, no problem to share it with you. But what about the industry 4.0? We have this picture here. Um, this picture is is uh, taken from is taken from the from the European Commission different information. We have a human centric in one hand, in the other hand is sustainable and resilient. And in our case, in the Basque Country, all our strategy is focused on the person, on the 4.0 society, and we are betting on sustainable human development and to to put this whole strategy in the floor, our main players are, are our teachers and trainers that are the core of the of the whole of the whole strategy. So uh, we are uh, we are working in different networks, not only at European level, not only at world level, also here in the in the region, in the Basque Country. Um, this uh, all these different networks uh, are developing the same framework. Maybe this is our main characteristic that all the system is following the same way. Eh? We don't have a best practice or another best example. No, this all the system is um, is 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 doing the same way or is going in the same direction. And maybe this this give us a lot of a lot of power. And of course, this strategy is led by the Vice Ministry of Bed, but is coordinated and supported by our attached bodies. One of them is Technica, the other one 
is Italent. The Italent is the Basque Institute of Talent, and the other one is the IBAF, is the Basque Institute of Future Learnings that is in charge of more or less the curricula, the micro credentials, and is always thinking thinking in the in the near future. Um, this is all from my part, uh, Josu. I I try to give you a very brief uh, picture uh, of the past country or, and what we are doing uh, in the field of research and innovation. And maybe the the our main characteristic is the collaboration between the different departments in the past government and. Just in our in our house, in the vet vice ministry, is the collaboration between our vet centers, our different bodies, attached bodies or organisms, and uh, always collaborating with uh, companies. For example, here we have uh, Josu, and the collaboration with companies is is maybe the core of or of the of the um, of the successful model of the Basque country. Okay, Ricardo, well, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you very much for, for your presentation. Uh, we are on time, okay, so sure. if anyone has any question for Ricard, now is the time. If nobody has any question, that's because uh, it, it, it's very clear. So if nobody has any, any question, we can go forward and... Uh, yes, okay. So let's continue with the next presentation. Uh, the next speaker is... Pili Alonso, eh, eh, Director of Applied Innovation in Strategic Settings at Technica. She will describe the vast ecosystem on applied research projects. Please, eh, Pili, eh, the floor is yours. Okay, good morning to everybody. Can you listen to me? Yes. Okay, thanks to share with us this uh, activity. And I will try to explain, as Josu has said, the research innovation system in, in better ecosystem. So, and I will share a document for that. Wait a minute. Oh my God, moment. Oh, I can't. I have. Can do that. Wait a minute. I don't know why. I have problems with my computer. I will try again. Okay. Can you see? The presentation? Yes, Billy. Okay, perfect. So uh, I will try to explain the innovation, the research apply innovation system in Bed Center. And uh, here you have an scheme that could be a resume for the that scheme. So in, in Basque Bed ecosystem, uh, we try to define an scheme based on the smart study speci specialization strategy that Ricardo Lamardid has explained before. So we try to to analyze the the, strate the strategy of bus government, and apart from bus government, we try to listen also to different agents in Basque network, and of of course in taking into account the science and technology because we are talking about a research and apply innovation system. And not only the Basque County ecosystem, but also the international point of references. And of course, another point that for us is a core team that are the driving companies because we are preparing students to be able to, to develop different projects in our company's ecosystem. For that, uh, the first uh, device or the, the first model we try to define is uh, the technological watch hubs. What are the technological watch hubs? One of the key challenges facing BET is to adapt the knowledge to the current and future needs of bus business fabric, of course. So when we have the government, when the government has identified the priorities, 
and the opportunities, we try to activate different policies so that we can, we, uh, we became then in reality. And those watch have are the ones which define the, the way we, we should work. So wo which are the objective of the hubs? They study and they roll out the innovation strategies. Then they try to monitor size the technological items, contrasting with the vast network science and technology innovation, driving companies or international agencies. Then they draw up conclusions, trying to prioritize initiatives and promote different projects inside of the BET innovation system. And which are the current operative hubs that we have? We work in bioscience, advanced manufacturing, health, digital and connected factory, energy and autonomous robotics. And next year we will work also in creativity, in, cre in creativeness and in creativity and training studies. So uh, coming back to the first scan to be able to understand, we have some hubs that prioritize the strategies in the, the areas I have mentioned before. And when we know which will be the future lines, we should activate different priorities and policies to, to, to bring out to our bed centers. And how we do it? We use three different uh, ways of work, the applied research uh, in our system. One of them is the one you have in the middle called areas of specialization that are working in Technica. Uh, we divide it uh, into different activities because uh, when we talk about applying innovation, we think firstly we should research and take the knowledge in order to apply in our centers and try to help to companies when the knowledge we have get. So uh, we divide it into big blocks. The first one are the areas of specialization, and we are talking about long-term projects, projects that are developing during three, five years. And, which, and we work in those projects in Technica. But Technica is a small institution. We work in 35 teachers in, in that, but uh, there is a, a rich part of the institution in which different teachers of our vet centers collaborate in in a part time with Technica. And in that way, we have a 260 uh, teachers team that are working in those specializations that I will define later on. So which is our main quarry? We wanted to create knowledge and training in those emerging areas, I mean, in these areas, bioscience, energy, digital and connected factory, and so on. And, uh, the, the aim of, the, of those specialization is work in three, five years until the technology is uh, getting over and, and we know all about the technology and, we provide, and later on we will provide that knowledge. Of course, always collaborating with companies because uh, we, we believe in an ecosystem that is created by different agencies as education agencies, um, applied research uh, hubs, and of course the companies. So when we work during three, five years, then teachers are, they have the, the enough knowledge to propose different projects, but short-term projects. If I return to the scheme. Now I'm talking about the the one which is marked with the three point. Uh, the bed center has the opportunity to propose different innovation projects. More or less, the duration of the projects is one course, and they they are proposed by bed to the educational system to the uh, to, to the department of Ricardo La Madrid. And uh, they have the capability and the knowledge, and they try to experience in developing innovation projects in their own bed center. So we try to, to improve our knowledge surrounding our bed centers. And about the specialization, the long 
term innovation research and innovation projects, which are the main lines we are working in. And we divide it in, in two big families, I would say. On one hand, we have the technological innovation and intelligence systems. And on the other hand, we have the bioscience and sustainability systems. When we talk about the technological innovation and intelligence system, we are talking about line of work and about Industry 4.0. Ricardo Lamadre has told that it's one of the uh, strategy of the government, and we are aligned with, with the watch has has seen. So they are uh, quite in, quite aligned with the ones that Ricardo has mentioned. We are talking about so Industry 4.0, Internet of Things, Internet of Sense. Uh, 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 with, with different uh, shares, edge and cloud computing, uh, cyber security, and so on. Then we have advanced manufacturing. It's a little bit mixed with the, with the previous one, but we are talking about 3D printing, in metal additive manufacturing, autonomous robotics. Automotive technology, electromobility is one of the core of the Basque country. We, we work a lot in machining and in automation sectors. Advanced repair and uh, energy. We are working also with hydro, uh, hydrogen and uh, clear or green energies because uh, we think that the, the world uh, has to change uh, and we will work for that. And enable technology digital transformation, virtual environments, blockchains, and so on. So here we have a son of the specialization, long-term projects that we have summing up all of them is 19 specializations. I have mentioned before that we divide it in two big families, the one technological ones and the bioscience and sustainability that of course they are linked also with technology. We talk about a sustainable agrofood, the natural and ocean environment, a smart building, bean systems, sustainable constructions, and environmental health and sustainability bioscience. So those are the 19 specializations we are working in Technica with a specialized teachers and with a very big groups in which vet center teachers collaborate in part time with us, more or less in a middle, in a half a week, they are collaborating with us in each one of the specializations I have mentioned before. Okay, and then I have mentioned that there are another projects that are short term projects, one course, and I, and I, I, I will introduce two of them. There, uh, we try to develop a year uh, 50 or 60 projects. Remember that those projects are proposed by bed centers. And here you have one project, which one bed center, which is called Politecnico of EASO. And he is working with different companies and in digitization of heritage, metaverse, and tokenization and blockchain. So, and they're using this project, a laser scanner, a draw, drone to take a photographs to create a 3D digitization. And in this case, in the area of architectural, historical art or natural. And they try to monitor, to do the monetization of the project also using the tokenization. Uh, one of the core of those projects is that the one they are de developing could be applied in the other best center. So one center is developing this research in this area, and when they finish, they do the transfer of knowledge to the other best center. In that way, the other centers in next year, they can start working in it. Another different project could be this one. This one is done by two bed centers because we try to, to involve different schools, trying to collaborate between us because in that way, the knowledge will be richer. And here there is a project which main core is to, to do an autonomous robotic, robotic chair for girls and boys with cerebral palsy. 
and or, or, or to girls and boys that have several mobility issues. And they use an and device which is based with ROS technology and art artificial intelligence, and they simulate and they and they they get mobility in at in the in that way those girls and boys can move in, out, in autonomously. So here you have two different projects that are proposed by pet centers and the duration is one year. So uh, we have different ways of do research in innovation in centers. When we get the, that information, that knowledge, we want it to share not only with our bed center, but also with our all ecosystem. And for us, our core ecosystem um, person or, or in company, okay, comp in, I'm sorry, the, for us, another main uh, collective are the driving companies and small companies, SMEs, because in Basque country, we have the 98% uh, of SMEs companies that are giving services to driving companies, of course. If we have in bed center enough knowledge about innovation, because we work in specialization areas or innovation projects, we, are, we can afford projects that have in companies and we can help them develop and develop them with different resources. Those projects are developed by teachers, but they can use also companies and teachers, the resources, the machines we have in centers and bed centers uh, have a very high level machines in, in them. So, and historically, in bed centers, we started giving formal training with, with different in different families, mechanical families, electrical families, and automatic families, and social families, and so on. And I, I would say 20 years ago, we started giving training for professionals, for companies, workers also. And in that in that year, uh, it, it was a very big, we, we tried to define a very big bridge between bed centers and companies. And in this moment, we are giving another step. We are trying to apply innovation. That knowledge we go we, we have in centers, we want to spread in our ecosystem in companies, because for us it's very important to to create a triangle that uh, you can see in the slide because we are trying to to train students in order to become workers in companies so we have to listen to companies try to understand which are their needs and train teachers and of course students and which uh, which which best way to do that uh, rather than work with companies in apply innovation projects. And for that, we have a program of a program that is called Tecagune. In this uh, program, we try to do innovation project for a small and medium sized companies because we understand that big companies have enough strength. They have their own innovation and uh, system inside of the company. But our SME companies, remember, 90-80% of bus countryside companies and don't have enough resources to ha to have a department to develop some uh, innovation projects but vet centers can help them and we can learn a lot trying to collaborate and trying to de develop with them so which is the main aim of the Kagune network it's try to uh, to, to transfer the knowledge in a bidirect bidirectional way from bed centers to SMEs and from SMEs to bed center. So bed centers support innovation, advanced training, technical innovation and improvement services. And what would we like to, to, to get? Try to help we, uh, to SMEs to improve their competitive, competitiveness 
developments and trying to shape strategy settings, trying to analyze which will be the line of the future. In that program, in the Kagune program, we are working more than 300 teacher, teachers divided in 45 bed centers. More or less in the cost system, there are 160 centers working all in a coordinated ecosystem. But in Tekagune, we are working in 45 centers. But of course, it's a cost system and we are coordinated. So if we have a center that have an opportunity with a company or a company have a problem that should be resolved, they connect with those five, uh, 45 centers and we give a response. We, uh, we try to define in which areas we, we had the, the, the knowledge in order to help companies and we define those six areas and they are aligned with the special, specializations because of course we listen to the hubs, we listen to government strategies, we listen to different agencies that are in Basque Country and we define those ones. Mobility, we are talking now about apply innovation projects. No researching, of course, is apply research processes. And we work in mobility, in energy and environment, in digitalization and connectivity, industry 4.0, biotechnology and health, and e-commerce, hospitality and tourism. Because these are the niches, the niches we have in our ecosystem. And to be more understandable, this explanation, and I, I, I would like to put two examples to know how do we work. Because later on, when I finish, uh, you will have the opportunity to listen to two better centers, EMEH and Don Bosco. And another important part is listen to the company, one company that has done an innovation project with us. So uh, with this activity, uh, our aim was to listen to different actors in the, in the system to be able to listen the different point of view. So how we work in the Kagune program? Uh, there are four steps that should be done. First of all, is to listen to the company, which is the problem or the opportunity he has. And in this case, uh, they did it, they, they, their need was uh, to optimize a design of a dye in a bread manufacturing process by reverse engineering. So, but teachers, because we that apply innovation projects are done by teachers. And we believe that if teachers work close to companies, they will get enough knowledge they have a base because they have done research projects, as I have said, in a specialization with a high level technology and in, with the projects they have, propo they have proposed. But when we are, for example, speaking about reverse engineering, we, we, we research in reverse engineering with different products. But then when the company has a problem, when you start giving the response to a special problem, a special product or process, you learn a lot about the process. And we believe that that knowledge can be transferred to our students. So when we finish that kind of projects, later on in the next year um, programs with the students, we try to apply, of course, if the company leave us because in sometimes the projects are confident and there is no problem and we maintain the confidentiality during three, five years and when we talk with, with the companies. So returning to the way of, of the Kagune program uh, works, there are four steps. The first step is to identify the collaboration project. So our teachers move around the ecosystem, move around the companies and try to, 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 to have the, the vision and to try to, to invest, the, uh, to, to research about which are the needs of the company. And we try to, 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 to accelerate them. And in this case, the company, a bread producer, have a, had a, pro, a, a problem with a dye. The bread 
uh, was stuck it in the die because the ejectors do not uh, do not do the work properly, and that I, is. I'm sorry, Billy. Yeah. I'm sorry. What's a die? Yeah. A die is a, here you have in the a down part of the slide, you can see the element. It's a special piece in which you put the bread and they give the form of the bread. So okay. it's an automatic produce, bread produce, and in which you have a, a, a final, I would say, piece that in this case is this white piece because it's white because it's done in a special material called acetal. I'm not an expert in that material, Barbara, but in, it, imagine a big machine in which you put the bread, but a big bread pies, it, 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 it introduced in the machine and in the final part there is a die that part that gives the form to the to the little bread uh, pieces that we we buy at the shops okay so the the okay. the you. form of yeah it's clear Ravala. more or less okay so it has a special shape and with the during the years the the shape uh, has been has don't do don't do the its job properly so they, they had a problem because they hadn't got the drawings and neither the material and enough technology to try to do the inverse in the reverse engineering and uh, have a good and uh, the good and the new uh, element so in the second step when teachers visit the companies identify the problem we try to collaborate with the company we have to talk about the participants, the, the ones that will develop the project, teachers in this case, the resources we have, because in this case we need a special scanner, we, we need an, an, an special machining mach, uh, machine, and uh, we explain to the company which, which is the team core and which are the deadlines because it's very important to listen to the company and to try to 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 get in a good way the deadlines agreed a budget because uh, we don't do that those projects to to um, to get money but we need a budget to fulfill the needs of the teachers the resources and the the products that are used in the project so we define the collaboration project and we agree the budget. In a third, the third step is the develop of the collaboration project. And in this case, the solution was do a functional analysis of the piece of the element of the in this machining element, digitize the original diet with a scanner, design improvements because there were some geometry modification in this case with a special software called geomatic it doesn't matter which software it is we try to to give the response to the needs of the company and we have a lot of software in our web sentence we parameterize the cat and we build a special material die that is a link to the needs of the uh, um, i don't know in english alimentary and food food uh, laws there are special law called FED. So in that way, the teachers uh, understand the law and, and ha get a lot of a lot of knowledge about the law and the scanners and the reverse engineering. So the next, the last step should be to transfer the knowledge to the schools and to the company, because other times we we do machines and workers should know how works the machines so we transfer the knowledge not only to teacher and the student but also to the company i will do and i will put another wait i can't yeah i will put another sample i will go more uh, fast but to, to understand in another way we have uh, we had another opportunity in this case in weldability in a study in aluminium alloys 
And you can say, okay, well, ability is innovation, is uh, apply innovation. In this case, it's not, it's an special weldability process because in the pieces, if you watch to the pictures, there are two months and the piece is very big. So it's not the same welding in a small piece or in a very big element or machine. So in this case, and they were involved, the, the company Cadinox in this case was involved in a European a project with a, in doing a, a scientific research on how um, about the goldability in aluminum in a very big uh, piece of aluminum. aluminum and uh, they wanted to, to parameterize the goldability process. So we did the same. We visit the company, we listen to the company, we watch which is the opportunity of the problem. We try to, to analyze if we have in the second step, we have enough, enough knowledge to give a response. We agreed a budget and we give a solution in a, a specific deadlines. And we know that uh, uh, for us, is is the the in a barrier because uh, teachers are teaching and are working with companies so our team teams are enough flexible to try to change our inside organizations to respond in a correct deadlines and in this case they did a study of vulnerability test test in migantic uh, technologies and they use different techniques and parameters for, um, for define the process. And they, finally, in the last step, they do the dissemination of the contents. So I don't know if um, I, I have been an understandable and on the all the scheme of, of our research and innovation system, but our main keys to do apply innovation system are the ones we have been working in our invert project. We have defined in some dimensions, 10 dimensions, and in, in Tekagune program that is quite aligned with our invert project, we have the same dimensions that are opportunities and barriers, of course. So uh, we try with this, this program to define an innovation strategy in each better centers, because if we want, students to have enough level to respond to company needs, we need to stop in centers, try to define innovation strategies, and when we know what we want in future, which technological areas will be the main areas, the tractor areas, we will, we will go out to find opportunities with companies, and we will be aligned with companies' needs and with government needs. We analyze internally the resources. OK, we have the strategy. How can we work next year? We have, we need a, a core team and th that core team should have enough knowledge in, technolo in technological and in resources in our bed system ecosystem. We involve some part of the staff. We are talking about 20% uh, of the staff. We analyze the strategic environment and we define the transfer processes. So we try to systemize a work framework that now with Agrimber project, we are trying to listen to different actors in Europe and we are trying to, to, to build, of course, a framework, but a standardized size framework. So uh, we are... Uh, we are happy to listen to all of you and to try to, to learn a lot and try to standardize a systematized work framework. And that's all from, from my part. I don't know if you have any questions about what I have explained. I think, I think, Josu? Yes, yes, you are on time. So if anyone has any question, otherwise we we move forward. OK, so everything clear. Perfect. So thank you very much, Billy. It was very Just clear. Joshua, I, I would like 
to apologize because I have an, another uh, meeting uh, now at 11 and a half. So I have I, I will be 10 minutes more here, but I have to leave. I'm so okay. sorry. But as is recorded, I, I will see later on in the afternoon. Okay. Thanks, thanks very much. OK, thank you very much, Billy. So let's continue with the agenda. I am going to introduce you our next next speaker. Uh, she comes from, from uh, the company Bronimec. She is Amaya Castro, who works in innovation and development in polymer engineering and additive manufacturing. And together with Amaya, we have Oyer Uriarte, uh, that all of you know. Uh, he's promoting innovation services from INH campus uh, for SMEs. Uh, please, and, uh, Amaya and Oyer, the floor is yours. Thank you and good morning to everyone. Uh, give me a moment. You'll see. Good morning to everyone. Yes, so yeah, we can see ah, yeah. block three. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we will start. Bueno, welcome to this conference um, where we will look at the collaboration between SMEs and vet centers. Uh, today we are going to see the evolution of a company, in this case, Bronimec, in the world of additive manufacturing and its collaboration with uh, IMH Vocational Training Center. A company that was dedicated to the purchase and sale of polymeric materials and today has managed to give added value uh, to the project, to the products, sorry, uh, by integrating machining, automatization, and then additive manufacturing. On behalf of the company, like we said, uh, here it's uh, Amaya Castro. Welcome, Amaya. So, um, I'm going to to tell you who who is she. Well, who is she? One, give me one moment. Yeah, Amaya, like uh, well, Amaya is a research and development manager in Bronimec, and well, she has an industrial technical engineering in industrial chemistry, and then she studied here in the Machine Tool Institute uh, campus, uh, process and product innovation engineering. And apart from that, uh, then she studied a uh, university specialist in additive manufacturing. You have the LinkedIn if you want uh, more information about her. And then, well, you know, you know me, everyone. I'm a commercial engineer at IMH campus, and I'm a collaborator in project management office in Tecauna, in Technica. And I studied an engineering master's degree in with the well, with the CESI. Uh, we are going to explain where we live. Uh, it's important for us. Um, why? Because bueno, El Goibar is the town where my institute and their SME of Bronimec, uh, it, it, no, they are located. El Goibar is a town in the province of the in Guipuzcoa, in the Basque Country, in the north part of Spain, and belongs to a region called the Bavarrena, with a population of more or less about uh, 11,000 people, more or less, it depends on the year, and 39 kilometers, um, more or less, no? Yeah. Uh, and then uh, it's called the capital of the machine tool because, bueno, we have lots and lots of companies that and they are working building uh, machine tools, lathes, uh, mainly machines, this type of uh, bueno, machines. You could see a photo here of our beautiful town <laughs> <laughs> and some data of our town. Uh, the 60% uh, more or less of the sectors of activity are industrial and more or less 30% they are services. Bueno, we will continue now explaining and the most important thing is uh, who we are. So I'm going to start explaining uh, about uh, IMH campus and what we are doing. So the, to start explaining this, 
I think that the best way is to see a video uh, and you will see what type of things we are doing here. Okay. The Elvoibar Machine Tool Institute is an advanced manufacturing center which provides specialized training in advanced manufacturing and offers applied innovation services to the manufacturing sector. The IMH trains over 2,000 students annually over a wide range of programs which cater to the needs of the manufacturing sector for highly qualified staff. In order to do this, the IMH has a team of 90 professionals with wide-ranging technical, methodological and scientific skills. For example, we implement high-performance-oriented methodologies on multilingualism, the dual sandwich course model, and offer an integrated program of vocational training courses, continuous training, and dual sandwich engineering. In the sphere of applied innovation in the manufacturing sector, the IMH works in partnership with other educational centers, gaining expert knowledge, which is then reapplied in our training programs, resulting in new services. The IMH aims to serve people and businesses, helping them to shape their own futures. Our future is already on the move. Let's improve it together. So the IMH campus is an educational campus specializing in advanced and digital manufacturing, which works in a network with local and international strategic alliances and offers, on the one hand, high value training for people through vocational training, university education and continuous uh, education. On the other hand, services for the companies, and today we are going to speak about, about it, and technological and organizational innovation projects. Uh, IMS campus currently has three strategic technological areas, digital manufacturing, advanced, advanced manufacturing, in machining and additive manufacturing. We are going to focus today in additive manufacturing. Okay, so, well, Amaya, I think the time has come to talk about Bronimec activity, explain to us what Bronimec is and what has been its uh, historical evolution. So, hello everyone, thank you for inviting me to stay here and to explain a little bit about Bronimec. So, as I just told, um, Bronimec is located here in El Goiba. Uh, I started working there in 2011, more or less, and we were like 12, 13 people working there with not even a million of turnover. And nowadays we are 20, 21 people working there with more than 4 million uh, euros of turnover. So, historically, Bronimec was funded in 1995, just uh, buying and selling brands. But uh, from the very beginning, uh, we decided to get a chance in the plastic line. So we started working with, uh, nowadays it's called Mitsubishi Plastics, uh, inside the Mitsubishi Group. But before was Quadrant and was different uh, name of the company. But we work with a big national, multinational Mitsubishi uh, for thermoplastic materials. Uh, also in 2008, we decided to start with composite materials to have the whole line of plastic materials, not leaving the metal uh, part. But currently, nowadays, uh, the plastic and composite line is more than the 75% of our turnover in comparison with the, with the metal part that is always non-ferrous metal because if you look around uh, El Goibar, all the companies that are doing hard is everything about um, ferrous aluminium, metal. Yeah, aluminium, yeah. Yes, everything like that. But in our case, we don't. Uh, we only work with plastics and with non-ferrous metal. So uh, in a natural way, it came the opportunity to go through the additive manufacturing. And in 2020, we start uh, working in different small projects and we start building our own 3D laboratory that you can see there in the in the image. So um, uh, I started with uh, the um, trying to make the technical office of the company because 
uh, as I told, the beginning was just commercialization. Now we've got a uh, machining, we've got a warehouse automatic automatized warehouse connected to nesting machines, to five acid machines, carving machines. And um, I started to collaborate with uh, the, the machines and the commercial people that was weren't so so knowledge didn't have so much knowledge about the um, of the machining process. And nowadays, the technical office office has turned into an engineering group where we can collaborate with quality, with automatization, digitalization, and of course the three D laboratory laboratory that we have grown now. Okay. So now that we have an overview of IMH and Ronimec, uh, we will explain two of the projects that we have uh, been carried out in Ronimec in the area of additive manufacturing. Our experience with them is focuses in three areas, mechanical manufacturing, automatization, and then in additive manufacturing uh, within Tecagune. Today, uh, we are going to focus uh, on the area of additive manufacturing uh, and in case we have time left, uh, we will be able to explain other types of projects we have carried out. But uh, we prefer to focus it in additive manufacturing because um, I think that it's going to. You will see why I'm speaking about this. Uh, for this, Amaya will be the person who will explain the need as well as the steps that uh, were carried out technically within the project. And then I will explain the procedure the four steps that Philly has explained us to be able to to, have, to know how the projects were achieved and their assessment and their implementation and their transfer. Okay, so we will start. Okay, so this first project uh, was uh, really very important for us because it was the beginning of the additive manufacturing uh, line for us. Uh, as I mentioned before, we work with plastic materials. We work on our day to day with more than 80 plastic references. And when you start thinking in additive manufacturing, mostly for plastic additive manufacturing, uh, you have just a few materials. It's like we start with 80, and now for additive manufacturing, we've got 10. And it's not enough. For, for all the needs that we have for different companies, for example, food sector, uh, for railway sector, that is one of our uh, most important sector in our turnover. So uh, related with this uh, railway sector, uh, here in the second line, you can see two parts machined in plastic material. And we would like to know if it was possible or to making them in additive manufacturing with all the, um, the laws that have to, all the specifications that the railway sector needs for those materials regarding mostly for fire and smoke uh, densities. So we spoke with IMH and we started speaking about what can we do with lightweight uh, materials and lightweight skeletons in additive manufacturing, but then trying to introduce another material that it's not in additive manufacturing, it's for composite materials, but can we implement to our system and make a part made of additive manufacturing and finished in um, like a composite material. So that's what we started. Uh, yeah, I'm going to show you, we have here the pieces, um, yes. We are going to show you. Really Give me, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if you. Okay. Well, we have here the pieces. Uh, one of the pieces you will see. This is made by additive manufacturing. This and, is a mold. Yeah, it's a mold. It's difficult to, to see, but bueno, I'm going to, we are going to try to explain you how it works. Okay. This we goes. We can see it. It's correct. We can see it. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, no? Okay. So uh, this is the mold, and, and this is the part, and this is the part that it's uh, into the mold. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah. So this is the final part um, that it's made in additive manufacturing, the same technology as the mold, and the intention is to uh, filter this 
um, I don't know if you can see that there are like small holes in the in the path. So in those small uh, holes, we want to introduce resin, a uh, fiber retardant resin, just to obtain the path with a fire retardancy degree. It's a project that is uh, really important for us that we are not able to finish because uh, the evolution of the regularization of a uh, railway sector is going really fast and we are not able to uh, standardize the, the final product. I mean, we can obtain this part for railway, but we don't have enough information to continue with other parts because the quantity of additive manufacturing plastic materials, in this case, PA12 and nylon, uh, we don't know how the rate should be between additive manufacturing and the resin percentages to obtain the, the good material for the needs of railway sectors. Okay, so I'm going to share again. Give me a moment. So we continue. Why? Right. Sorry. Oh no, we are going to pass it. Right. Yeah. So uh, at the beginning, uh, this work was carried uh, by vocational training personnel in the area of industrial design. Yeah. That was important because uh, which will nowadays be framed within the additive manufacturing area that didn't exist at that time. So uh, we start with designing and then we continue it um, with additive manufacturing. We, we create the department of, uh, of additive manufacturing uh, with projects like uh, Bronimec uh, project. So what type of things that we have done with them? Uh, we design a new geometry of piece adapting the additive process, uh, applying mitigation techniques through lattice uh, structure is technical things, but they are important to, to be known. Uh, design the outer side of the mold, maintaining a separation of the piece of two millimeters, a uh, coat resin, like she told you before. And then we manufacture and assemble the parts for continuous injection. You see how we, uh, how you say, how we assembly the different pieces and how we create the piece um, there. And all this made with PA12 material in a HP 4200 plant with multi-jet fusion technology. Uh, there are here some images uh, that you could see uh, the machine. The machine is uh, the machine that it's uh, in the left part, in the top left part uh, um, of the slide. And then you could see our new department of um, additive manufacturing. We are uh, put in there and we are working with different, different companies with different uh, technologies. Uh, HP or Multijet Fusion is one of them. Nowadays we have five or six uh, different technologies and we are working a lot uh, in this type of uh, things. Okay. So uh, explaining this, because for me it's the, the most important uh, thing, uh, let us explain the second one. In this project, the company request uh, was something creative and which until then no client uh, had asked for, uh, asked for. The creation of a demonstrator model where we could show the potential multi-jet fusion technolo technology with the aim uh, of bringing plastic technology closer to the industry. So I'm going to show you. And when we have here, then we will show you because we have here the pieces too. So if, if you want, you can click there and I will start speaking. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we are going to give me one second. And I think that we are again here. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so this one is the part. So I don't know if you, uh, it's like a demonstrator. Yes. So um, we, as we told before, uh, in El Goibar and in the past country in general, uh, all companies know uh, metal part. We all dedicate to machining, uh, additive manufacturing, and mostly uh, plastic additive manufacturing is focused on uh, toys, 
or something for your for you it's not an industry part or it's a prototype it's not a final production part so in a way we wanted to show um, our customers and the industry in general that it's possible to have final uh, functional part with IT manufacturing because multi-jet fusion technology lifts us. So we wanted to show in a small part all the potential of the additive manufacturing of multi-jet fusion technology. So this is uh, this was created for a trade fair. I think it was for, for Madrid. And we want to show firstly the topological optimization. Sorry. So starting from here, we obtain this part and finally this one with the topological optimization, lattice structures and different things. Uh, and then different uh, textures. textures and final parts, like this is the same part, one is metallized, the other one uh, is just dyed. So a lot of different opportunities that give us the, the additive manufacturing, just to show the potential of the additive manufacturing in the industry, because everyone knows metal additive manufacturing, but the plastic technology is still like a residual one. So I'm going to show you again <laughs> the presentation. Give me a moment. So Web again. <laughs> so we have here the piece. Uh, well, no, you continue if you. Uh, yes, that's the piece. Uh, the only photo of the fur that I found was that one. Sorry for that. But uh, the the aim was to, in a in a simple, small way, just show the customer, go to the customer's house, go to try first, and say. Okay, this is IT manufacturing. You can do this. We can do metallizations. We can optimize your part with all the benefits that are the IT manufacturing. And it's like a story to tell something that can support that story to show and to try to understand people why uh, the IT manufacturing and not 3D printing, 3D printing is important for, for us. So now I'm going to show you some ideas. Uh, we start with some ideas. Yes, sorry, oh yeah, because this is uh... Wait. Sorry. I don't know what's happening. We are very mono. Well, I'm going to show you uh, some how how we work and the first ideas for doing uh, this work. We started with this. And and we made in I don't know if you have seen a printer work and bueno we we bring here I'm going to put it no Matt how we work with the printer is you see uh, the different type of pieces how are made uh, it's like a, a usual printer but uh, you will see if you come when you go to San Sebastian if you came to the Machine Tool Institute I will show you how we work and what type of things we are doing here. The tax performer, a compilation of design and manufacturing capability of uh, HP, HP multi-jet fusion technology. And it's the most important thing I, I think that it's uh, the post-processing and use the different topological optimization. What is topological optimization? Is to reduce uh, the height and- Yes, the, is to obtain the perfect or the most optimum uh, shape of a part, maintaining the all the capabilities uh, that it needs, but with the very low, with a very low material, with the less material possible. Sometimes the uh, topological optimization is so thin or it's so uh, small that the customer gets like afraid that what's that that won't support my my part. So we start from the optimum one and we start adding material or aesthetically also make it, it more beautiful or more easy to see for the customer. That's it. So um, explaining this uh, now, sorry, I'm going to turn, epa. 
Uh, I'm going to explain you how this project was carried carry out uh, for the vocational educational training center. As Pili said uh, before, we have like um, four steps process. Uh, in this case, we work like this. Uh, the sales manager, with the help of the vocational training center teacher in charge of internship, uh, visited Bronimec to explain the Tecagune project. They didn't know what was Tecagune, and I we went with uh, vocational training center teacher, and we explained them uh, how we work, uh, what type of things uh, we could do. So they were surprised because uh, they want to work with additive manufacturing, but they didn't have the knowledge to do it. So the teacher who identified the need uh, contacted to, to the Tecagune coordinator and the co coordinator met with the team uh, to see if Bronimex uh, project was uh, feasible. Uh, then uh, um, uh, a solution to Bronimex demand was proposed and they were consulted if it was feasible. Uh, they said yes. <laughs> and a budget was prepared with different objectives, content and financial amount of the proposal by Tecagune coordinator. Uh, the project was carried out uh, in the IMH bed center facilities and then the pieces were given. In this case, you have seen the pieces, <laughs> parts, but different parts. Uh, and it was explained how the project was carried out. The most important thing here is for uh, in one hand, we have the pieces, but the, in the other uh, another thing that is important is how they were made. Uh, to explain the process, because we know to transfer this knowledge to the SME. Um, you will see the, after uh, what type of um, uh, things that they have grown grown in up. And the knowledge was transferred to the company, like I said, to the teacher, because the teachers are uh, doing this type of projects, are, they, they have uh, more skills, and to the education system. We call it four-step process. Okay, and now uh, another. Well, I think that uh, you are going to explain this better mm -hmm. than better than me. But what EMH Event Center has contributed to Bronimec through the Applied Innovation Project, as well as as it transfers. So uh, for us, the most important thing is uh, that. Uh, IMH in this case and on the pet center is really close for us. Uh, they practice that really active listening. So once they came to us and start uh, speaking about the project, uh, they are continuously appearing new ideas for in our head because for a small company, it's really hard to make innovation. Uh, the day to day, it's really strong. It's uh, really demanda, demandant. So uh, we don't have time to sit down, start thinking how we are going to do some project. So working with the IMH in this case, let us to start a new ID manufacturing line. Uh, we created the department, we create the knowledge, and now we can uh, work in ID manufacturing by ourselves. We always have some deals and we, have, we only always have something that like, can you help me with this? We don't, how, we don't know how to work in this case, but we are more or less independent. And we add value to our line because we work with IT manufacturing and with machining processes. So we both collaborate together. There is nothing, the machining process is not less than the IT manufacturing, IT manufacturing one. So it's a continuous collaboration. So uh, explaining this, uh, we are going to see what has uh, the Machine Tool Institute uh, what does the collaboration with Bronimec uh, on Tecagune projects bring to the um, IMH bed center? In this case, like I tell you before, like I told you before, the increasing of the skills of our teachers in the field of uh, additive manufacturing. Uh, there weren't here any, there wasn't any department of additive manufacturing. We start uh, working with companies as Bronimec, and now we we have created that department. Uh, then. Um, the knowledge of the needs of the SMEs in the field of ad uh, additive manufacturing, we have recognized uh, what type of things they are looking for and what type of technologies uh, we need to have here in our birth center 
And then the most important thing for me is the, the generation of knowledge for the creation of new training catalog in vet centers and, and continuous training. And I bring you some examples here. Um, the first one uh, is the additive manufacturing professional training specialization course. We, we did a new specialization course of uh, 990 uh, hours and then continuous training courses. Uh, there are some examples there, introduction to additive manufacturing of four hours, topo topological optimization design software oriented to additive manufacturing, and then bueno, another type of uh, technologies and 3D printing in general. And uh, I'm going to show you another video and we are going to finish with this video to understand what type of um, what type of technologies we have here and and this is the video it's in spanish but it's the video of our specialization okay so uh, instead of putting here i'm going to put it if i could one give me one second i'm going to put it in here and you will see here we have different technologies for example, here we have. We are, oh, you're sorry. We, oh, you're sorry. We cannot see are, anything. FDM, plastic oh, technology. Oh, yeah. We cannot see anything. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Tell me. Oh, yeah. We cannot see anything. Ah. Okay. Okay. That, don't worry. We will put it here. Uh, well, one moment. Eh? No, no, don't worry. Uh, one moment. Ah, yeah. Ah, vale, vale. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry again. It's difficult to. Yeah, I think that. Oh, vale. Vale. Oh, Amanda. Okay. Now yes. So yeah. It's here. Now yes. So, <laughs> I think that you have seen everything. And uh, Josu, now is your time. If you have any question, tell us and we will answer it. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us, Barbara. Yes, Josu, you are uh, with Nasa. Please, Barbara, yes. go, go ahead. So, I, I was curious, <clears throat> you said for the Bronimac project, you took it, you went there, you listened to what's the problem, and then you went back to Tecaguna and you decided it's feasible. So how do you do that? How do you decide? Because is there's many companies, there's many projects, there's many real life questions. How do you decide if that's feasible, if it's for you? You know, it's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, we start um, speaking, well, no, first of all, we have like uh, different courses of um, IT manufacturing to understand how the machine works and 
what type of pieces we could do like this one okay <laughs> uh, and then uh, we see the problem and we start designing the different um, strategic uh, solution that it could be uh, we speak, we were speaking with them and they told us the first one no the second one no the third one we are going to use the third one so then we start using different technologies of additive manufacturing to see what was the best technology to do this type of um, pieces and we do it once and again once and again once and again until we uh, we well, we we solve the problem with this piece uh, it's like um a work of different departments and with the SME to see uh, to solve the problem in in different ways and we de we decide that the best way was this one and and, well, and we did it I don't know if we answer the question or not but so if I, for us just to add that uh, every time we got not a problem but something that we will try to improve uh, it's really easy to speak with the IMH uh, and they always try to help if they've got the, the resources or they are trying to um, continue learning uh, with all the needs of the near the industry. I mean, um, it's not like we've got a, a thousand of different things to do. Most of the industry here in the Basque Country are really focused in some areas and it's really easy to find someone to help the company. And so if I understand it correctly, what you do is um, you look to what resources you have and if you can use them for the problem that's on the table, you do trial and error, you make different types, you try different Prototypes ways to and, solve it yeah. and you go back and you then the communication is key. Then you really need to know what, yeah. Yeah, and what then is with of that, interest. And with that knowledge, uh, the example is, I think, I, Amaya. Amaya didn't know anything about additive manufacturing until she started working with us uh, in with the bed center then uh, we start with projects and then uh, in the same time she was studying uh, courses with us uh, that the, and that courses were made uh, because we transfer the knowledge from the projects to the courses so she was studying and she, she was excited. doing the projects yeah. with us uh, that's like the, the cycle nice. that we are uh, we are using the four step uh, work. Okay, I don't know if I understand. Yes. I answer you, Barbara. Yes, thank you very much. I, yeah. I see that you are both very enthusiastic. That's also very nice because I yeah. can see that this is <laughs> working. It's very nice. Uh. Okay, so is there any other question for uh, Amaya Noyer? Okay, so then let's continue. Thank you very much, uh, Amaya Noyer, for uh, your presentation and for bringing this uh, real case example. And now let's uh, uh, let's continue. Okay, let's uh, let's start the next uh, presentation. Eh? We will have uh, now the perspective of the vet provider. I introduce you, uh, Miriam Canellada. Uh, she is teacher of Don Bosco Vet Center and also. She is also in charge of the Tecagune program in her organization. She will talk about the management of SME's needs by a vet center. Uh, please, Miren, uh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, as uh, Josu said, uh, I, my name is Miren Canellada and I work uh, in Don Bosco, that is a Tibet center that was located in near San Sebastian. And I'm going to share my presentation. I think she has she had problems. No, I think she disappeared, at least in my it screen. Seems that she has gone. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So let's, let's wait. Yes. Let's wait a couple of minutes until she connects again. Okay. Here she is. Hi, Miren. Sorry, sorry. I don't have worry. A, I have put the the bad button. Okay, uh, don't worry. I'm sorry. Eh? One moment. Yes. Estoy en una presentación, me han cambiado, no me han dejado, el, me han quitado el aula. 
Yo estoy aquí. Bueno, si vais al otro lado, mejor. Sí, pero si vais al otro lado, igual mejor. Tengo que presentar yo. Excuse me, es de director problems. <laughs> so, I'm going to start my presentation. Uy, compartir. Ok. Do you see the presentation? Yes, yes, we see yes. it. Okay, okay. So let's go. Sorry. Eh? So I'm going to present a little bit the Don Bosco TV Center, their particularities, uh, the Kaune program, how we develop this kind of program in in Don Bosco. And after I'm going to finish with a, an example, real example, as Oyer has presented to you. So Don Bosco is a, a Tibet center that is located uh, in Renteria. We have uh, near 1,100 students in formal training in different levels, uh, basic, intermediate, uh, higher, and specialization courses that I'm going to explain a little bit more in the next slides. And we have also training for work uh, programs. Uh, for unemployed people, for employees, for professional, uh, professional competence accreditation, and also uh, we have open offer uh, training uh, adapted to companies' needs. Uh, our train offer is basically in uh, different uh, uh, professional areas as electro electricity and electronics, uh, mechanical fabrication, transport and vehicles man maintenance, chemistry, informatics and communication, TICS, uh, installations and maintenance, and also food industry. So we are a quite big school for the, for the Basque Country. In general, are more reduced uh, better schools. Uh, in in the formal education in EQF uh, four and five, we have uh, uh, telecommunication installations technicians uh, training for auto body body work for electromechanics, uh, uh, chemical plant, etc. And for in higher technicians, uh, bueno, in higher level EQF five, we have. Uh, the possibility to train people in as technician in uh, analyze and quality control laboratory, industrial chemistry, pharmaceutical and biotechnological products, automotive technologies, electronic, industrial mechatronics, etc. So on. So if you need more information about the school, uh, we can you can see also the, the web page. Uh, it is important to say that we have also uh, for uh, students that has done uh, the formal training, they can continue with a, a one year more uh, studies for more specialized studies that uh, are uh, that are developed during one year, and they are called specialization programs or specialization uh, courses. These courses are uh, courses uh, that are developed, uh, taking into account the special needs that are uh, in the industry that are uh, around us. For example, we have a specialization program uh, about manufacturing and quality control of gene therapy medicines because we have a industrial uh, company here, Viral Gen, that need people uh, specifically. Uh, Train in this uh, in these uh, competencies. So we create uh, uh, special courses for that. So this means that uh, to be able to offer a quality training uh, adapted to the current and future needs, we need an innovative management system for the school. For the, so in the school we don't make only uh, training, we have to do a lot of things more. And in this uh, slide, you can see a little bit how we are organized. Here, we have the Don Bosco, the organization. We have a social council where teachers, uh, uh, staff of Don Bosco, and people from industries and social areas 
of uh, Errenteria take part in the decisions of the Don Bosco organization. Uh, we have a executive management manager and three main areas. One area that uh, work on a strategy, another that work in on innovation, sorry, another area in innovation and a operational management uh, area. Regarding the innovation area, the innovation area is also divided in different uh, sectors. For example, uh, we have uh, to work the innovation in digital, digital, digital uh, sorry, digitalization. Also, we have to work uh, innovation in methodology. We have another area here. Also in an entrepreneurship. Also, uh, we have to make uh, a little, see the ecosystem of innovation in our uh, industry and environment. And we have to develop projects, innovative projects in apply, we have to do apply innovation and research uh, working on projects to uh, actualize our teachers and staff in new technologies and methodologies. And Tecaguna is a program that is in this area. So we have uh, to do a lot of things, but Tecaguna is a program that aids us to work in this uh, applied innovation and research uh, in order to actualize our teacher staff. And I suppose that Pili has explained uh, before uh, what is a uh, Tecagune and uh, only say to repeat that the objective is to bring the teaching staff up to date in terms of science and technology and uh, to promote innovation in small and medium sized companies and in vocational training centers. Uh, or, um, uh, or uh, I don't know how to say, but uh, it is very important the networking that we do between vocational educational training centers and companies. So how it works, uh, Oyer has explained also, uh, the Tecagune program uh, has four steps. I'm not going to explain the same thing uh, again. The first step is uh, identify, the, uh, define the, the second, define the collaboration, the third, develop the collaboration, and the fourth, the transfer of the knowledge that we acquired during this uh, program or this project. And in, the, in Don Bosco, how, to, how it works, the, the Tecagune team no? or Tecagune program? Uh, it is integrated in the strategy of the of the school. Uh, we have uh, two people, one me and another one, that uh, we are coordinating the program. Uh, we try to identify projects, and not only uh, the coordinators, but also rest of teachers uh, when they go to visiting companies and taking uh, in contact uh, with the companies, they have in mind also this kind of collaboration. And if they see an opportunity, they, uh, they say, yes, uh, we have an opportunity to collaborate with this uh, company. Maybe it is feasible, maybe it is a, a Tecagune project. So we are going to, to make a proposal and develop uh, if the proposal is, uh, the, uh, is okay for the company and for the teachers that are in Tibet centers. Uh, the development of this project uh, is uh, is done. Okay, so the teachers of the required area of knowledge uh, is going to develop the project. Okay, is it, it is important that uh, when we have a possibility, we have to uh, search for the good people that can develop this kind of uh, project and it is interested to know more about the company's uh, needs and uh, how it works and so on. 
Uh, sometimes uh, we have not maybe the knowledge in the in our school. In this case, uh, Technica uh, works like a network. When we speak with Technica, and he in Technica they open the proposal to the network of uh, schools that are working in this program. So uh, this is a, a, a very good point that uh, Technica has a, a, around 40, 45 schools that are taking part in this program. And we have complement our knowledge with the knowledge of other schools. And the final step is very important, uh, is to things that has been uh, learned during the development of the project uh, to transfer it to rest of teachers, students and companies. So in general, uh, I'm going to explain the example, one example that we developed uh, two years ago in, in Don Bosco in the chemistry department where I, I work. Uh, Interal is a company that uh, develops and produces uh, a lot of food uh, products like soups, uh, broths, uh, dishes uh, that are prepared, creams, sauces, purees, etc. They offer a wide variety of recipes and formats that are adapted to the final consumer, they, it can be powders, they can be uh, soups that are uh, liquid, yes, and they work a lot in the innovation, creating new recipes, new uh, flavors, new uh, textures, and so on. Uh, we can say that uh, Interal is a hidden champion because they, they are leading a company and they have their own brand, but they manufacture mainly for private labels, and they are uh, a very uh, well positioned uh, company that is, that is located near Renteria. So, how was the tech the company need? But it is important to say that uh, we collaborate with this company before uh, develop this TKUNE program. We had uh, students that uh, made internships in this company and we had a, a real fluid relationship between teachers and company responsibles. And due to this uh, fluid relationships, we know that they had uh, problems to industrialize recipes that they develop in the lab their laboratory. They develop a recipe and it was uh, good, but in at the moment that they want to uh, put it in the industrialized uh, um, uh, manner, they had problems, they have difficulties uh, because uh, they didn't know what kind of controls do to the raw materials and uh, how this the, how the parameters of these raw materials can have problems or can uh, affect in the industrialization the difficulties were in the industrialization that sometimes uh, when they transport the raw materials to uh, the big uh, uh, reactors so to do the, the to do the soaps and the different uh, uh, recipes they had uh, clogging problems and also mixing problems they have crumbs and they have problems but they didn't know why they had these problems they didn't have problems at the laboratory level but they had problems in industrial level and they ask us uh, for uh, uh, to help to search for uh, how to control these uh, these problems. Uh, so, what was proposed by Don Bosco? We proposed to advise and support them in the process of implementation a new industrialization department that 
uh, carry out raw material production and product control. We see that uh, they need more control in the raw materials and also uh, in the production. And uh, they, we advise to create a new industrialization department and uh, our, uh, our work was to support them in the creation of this new department. We worked in different phases. The first phase was to collect data from the production processes uh, with the problematic recipes, detect weak points or critical steps of the different production processes, raw materials, manufacturing processes, final product, etc. And uh, after uh, checking this data and making a, a bueno, an analysis, analyze, uh, in the second phase, phase uh, we design and implement actions to be carried out for this chosen produce in order to uh, control or evit uh, evitate this, these problems. And we propose a raw material and production control plan. And how it was de developed, uh, the teaching staff went to the company to make these studies and raw materials reception. We checked warehouse condition also and the process manufacturing, manufacturing process conditions. Uh, we took samples and carried out also laboratory studies to determine the critical parameters to be controlled. For example, one critical parameter is the uh, the humidity of the raw materials, okay? And they didn't control that in industrialization, uh, well, in the company. So we determined that they need to control the humidity of the raw materials before going to the industrialization, yes? Uh, to do... These controls, we assist, uh, we were assisted by a student that was in dual system. Yeah? We have uh, work uh, by teachers uh, making all studies, but uh, at the same time, we had a, a student that was in the company doing the, the internship in dual system and she was the, the people that uh, has uh, uh, make the test that we propose. Okay. Uh, so at the end, we propose some controls to be carried out, which uh, uh, we propose also the equipment necessary to do these uh, controls and define quality limit values. And what were the results that we time uh, and how and how was the knowledge transfer? No, the teachers, the teachers uh, obtained more uh, knowledge on the production process of this, this type of food industry. Yes, uh, we can uh, know uh, real problems that they have uh, the companies and how to control or evitate these real problems. The company, uh, he obtained a defined raw material and production process control plan, yes? And also uh, he obtained a student with a specific knowledge on the matter and who he, she was hired after the dual internship. She, nowadays, she is the responsible for the, this new industrialization department, yeah? And Rest of the students that uh, are now in, in Don Bosco, we, we work uh, in Don Bosco with the students, we work on, on by challenges. Yes, uh, we made uh, theoretical uh, pills, but also they have some challenges to put in practice what they are uh, learning in a theoretical manner. And, we implement the knowledge of this uh, project in this kind of challenges. For example, here the, you have a, a, a slide or a picture 
where uh, we have a challenge in reto in Spanish um, does mean challenge where uh, we ask uh, to students to take a food uh, a, a, a food see uh, the etiquette of this food and try to determine the quality of this food the quantity of proteins uh, um, the fat quantity the humidity etc the viscosity etc and this is a, a challenge that is also based uh, in the knowledge that we have uh, take in this Tecagune project. So as conclusion, uh, Tecagune is uh, an applied innovation and research uh, project that promotes networking to facilitate the bidirectional transfer of knowledge between centers and companies. And uh, it is a win-win uh, experience. No, I think that uh, teachers has a lot of no, uh, love to know working in real problems with companies and companies wins also uh, because the students that are uh, in schools are going to be more uh, pre better prepared uh, and better uh, prepared to the real needs of nowadays companies. So thank you. I don't know if you have problems or problems uh, questions, <laughs> sorry. Okay, thank you very much, Miren. Uh, is there any question for Miren? Okay, nothing. So thank you very much, Miren. Uh, now uh, we will have a break until one o'clock. Uh, so more or less one, uh, one hour break. And uh, I, will, uh, I will appreciate if all of us are punctual so we can start on time at uh, one o'clock. Sorry, Josu. So, see you later. In you, I don't know if we can have I, to yes, we connect Josu, again. Yes. Can I have a proposal? Yes, uh, of course. Yes, the next uh, block, it will be very, very short. I mean, I won't last more than 10 minutes. My proposal is to do it now to explain uh, there is an exercise to do as a homework. Each partner need to do an exercise uh, after after uh, listening this this intervention. And I'm going to explain what do they need to do. And okay. we can do it uh, at one o'clock or in my opinion, it's better to do it now and then go working or having lunch. And what do you think? It's, a, That's so uh, fine. it's fine. It's fine. Yes. Is it fine? Are you okay? Is it going well? <laughs> yes. We are ready for a break, but 10 minutes we will last. <laughs> yes. It will not last more than 10 minutes. So thank you everyone for, for joining to the meeting and sharing this presentation with us. And now, our idea was to um, to make or to explain you one exercise of homework to do at home. Yes, Dirk. Oh, I, I want to make a sh short comment on on the full story because I was listening. I think I need the technique and I take a good program in the Netherlands because it's <laughs> I I think it will help, but I don't know how to evolve it because that's one of the questions in the homework I issue. Um, to implement it in the Netherlands, but I, when I was listening to it, I think it can really help in the Netherlands. And some years ago, we damaged something uh, on the same topic we had, and an office to assist the companies. So yeah, but that's a, a short reflection from my side on the on on this day. Uh. Okay, that's a very good, that's a very good reflection because the exercise goes from that side. <laughs> now I'm going to explain it, but yeah. Uh, in this exercise, our aim was to to put more in practice the Tegagune program with you, with the one that you are joining to this meeting and the partners of Arimbet. And we try to make a short questionnaire according to to what, what to what we have done in in the Arimbet project and according to what we have listened today with Oyer, uh, Pili, Ricard, and Miren and Amaya. So our idea was to uh, make a reflection about if I want to put Tecagune in my country, as Dir have said, that it, it would be a good idea. Uh, what do I need in my country to put 
uh, the Tecaguna system in the pet centers. And for that, I'm going to share with you the um, the questionnaire that we have prepared. Okay. Let's see how can I share. So here I have the first part of the of the questionnaire, and here the first part is a short description of what is the aim of the questionnaire. So having explained what the Kagune is and taking into account the reality of your territory, please identify the gaps that may exist for developing the Kagune in your region country. And then we see that the interviews conducted in War Package 2 will be of great help to you in this task. Try to extrapolate the information from the interviews to fill in this questionnaire. You can use the information of the interviews or either you can use the information you have because, uh, because of your knowledge. OK, so for this, there is a little description of the objectives of Tecagune, just to remember you what uh, Tecagune is about. And then we are remarking again, please click on the options you think are missing in your region or country to carry out the Gagune Applied Research Project. And for that, we wanted to connect with the Arimblet uh, dimensions that we have created in Word Package 4. Okay. So here you can fill your name, the organization, and country that you belong. And then we have some. Uh, dimensions, functions, innovation and research, impact, and governance. And we put some element inside the four dimensions we created in a, in a work package for. And these elements are the keys or the elements that we think they are very important uh, for developing Tegagune, Tegagune project in your countries. So if I'm coming from the Netherlands, I see uh, what activities that the vet uh, here we have activities that the vet center carries out. Okay, okay. These are the activities that we see. They are very interesting that the vet centers has to do in order to start uh, making applied research project, the Kagune project in the center. So if I'm uh, coming from the Netherlands, I need to see if the continuous training. Uh, I need, I need to do a continuous training in the Netherlands to, to start uh, working on Tecagune Promers or not, because we already do this uh, continuous training. And these are the other elements. Uh, do we have a curriculum update? Do we need a research on learning methods and pedagogics? These are the one of the elements that we have designed in the, in the work package for, but the ones that are necessary to do Tecagune. Not all the framework of Arimbe, but just take a one. Okay. So first of all, we have this questionnaire that we are asking to you to do as a homework, not today, not in this moment, but to do as a homework. And tomorrow or the next days, you will receive an email uh, with this questionnaire asking to fo please follow the the questionnaire, and then uh, we can have another video call just to 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 keep in touch and to notice what what um, what you have filled in the in the questionnaire and what are the questions you have according to Tecagune. or we can discuss also in a bus countries meeting uh, the uh, in touch meeting that we we are going to to do in October I think because there is I think there will be uh, one block according to the interventions and, and we need to discuss uh, what we have learned in each intervention. So that's in October, but we can earlier do another video call with the results we have we have uh, we got uh, with this with this questionnaire and and that's it. And then after filling this, there is if there is another page. And in this page, uh, we wanted to know some indica indicators about your country. And I know it's quite difficult to know how many bed centers, for example, like approximate percentage of bed centers that has integrated the continuous training programs. I know it's difficult you to know 
how many of the vet centers have integrated the continuous training program. That's why we were asking you to know to put the approximate percentage of vet centers. And, and here we have five questions according to the percentage of vet centers that, that do continuous training or other, other materials. And that's it. That was my my intervention. That's why I was I was pleased asking you to do before having lunch because it was quite short. I don't know if you have any comment, any doubt on it or. OK, so then in you we can finish the, the intervention. Yes. Oh, OK, OK, so then uh, if anyone if anybody that doesn't have any any doubt or any question, uh, we finish the, this first intervention. I think we got an, an overall view of the activities running between vet providers and SMEs and how they are promoted and supported uh, from the education policy in the Basque Country. Of course, if you have any any doubt or any hesitation or any question, you can write any any of us and how we can try to to answer. Barbara, please go ahead. So um, I'm sorry, I was a bit confused about when there is a next meeting because we do the homework and then what? <laughs> we can, yeah, we can collect the answers and we can have another another video call with the with the answers of the of the questionnaire. Or we didn't, we don't know yet. If you are asking us to do a video call, uh, asking for the for the results of the questionnaire and looking what each partner has said or as in a, in the Basque country meeting there is a block and it's written in a, in a memory that we need to have uh, some time to discuss the intervention each intervention like the Basque one the Netherlands the German intervention we didn't know if discuss there in in the Basque country or before having a video call to discuss it we need to know we, we need to to argue or, or think we haven't decided yet. What do you think? It's okay. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Okay. I'll think about it too then. Yes, yes. I think um, it's a good idea to to fill the questionnaire and uh, we will know how to act after having all the all the answers. Yes, Daniela has raised the hand first. Yeah, I think uh, it's also interesting. <clears throat> to share on the website. So if you share the answers and can make a first draft of an analysis of the answers, I can also work on that and to share with everyone. Okay. Um, the next okay. intervention is in uh, Hamburg. This is from Hamburgers from Germany. Yeah. On the. Yeah. So we can also make a wrap up um, on the 24th of April. So it's also possible that we have a look at it before we start the intervention. So we have a little bit of uh, repeating and coming into the topic. OK, that's great. Yeah, so and I'm I'm still in the process of finalizing the intervention. And uh, yeah, I think after our conference, we have tomorrow and to the day after tomorrow. And, and on Friday, also the three days now, uh, we have a huge conference here. Uh, after this, I'm going to finalize it and I'll send you the detailed planning and I'll also integrate the, the first wrap up of your session. So it's of your of the intervention. OK, yeah. so we will collect the answers and then see how can we act if we can act uh, before your intervention or. Yeah, we will keep in touch and we'll tell you yeah, what's cool. our idea. And Edwards, according to you, I have read on the chat that maybe Russia can compete because of uh, European, European scope. Of course, of course. Uh, yeah, that's true. Please, I ask you to read uh, the, the questions and let me know if you are able to answer at least, I don't know, uh, the Belgian system or another system or, or according to the interviews, maybe you have more information of one region or and yeah. We yeah. can keep in touch. Okay. Uh, thank you. We'll 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 do what we can. Thank you, Jan. Dick was also raising. No, what, his hand. My question is solved by the option of of uh, of heading that he say um, let's do a little wrap up uh, before my intervention on uh, April twenty fourth. Yeah. 
Okay. I want to to add two things if I, I can. Sorry to keep you here. So John, I wanted to say that previously when Hiroshi filled out the survey about the dimensions, Marta took the approach to look at Belgium and then mostly the Flemish part. So to make it comparable, you could yeah. also choose if Europe is too wide. Well, yes, again. I mean, we're not specialists <laughs> on the Flemish uh, vet system. I know, you know? But, uh, and she was aware, she pointed out. It, is in Brussels, but I will speak to uh, Marta and uh, uh, Jakob and see what we can do. Yeah, or maybe I think some of the questions can be answered and others can't. Uh, yes, yeah. and also I wanted to ask, so when I read the the application about making the interventions, I thought we were going to already implement what we learned so far. So now we are going to look into what we, what the dimensions can do for us if we want to extrapolate the approach of Tekaguna, right? So did Tekaguna, did you internally, that's what I wanted to ask, maybe not, eh? but I wanted to ask, did, did Erin Vett bring you something till now? Project that embed. I mean, the, the work that we have done since today in a, in a project. Till today. Uh, yeah. Yes, of course, we have we have learned many things. Maybe not as direct as because we have our uh, Tekagune system, Tekagune program, which is very coordinated and very straight written, and and we have our steps. But I think it's very interesting to know, uh, for example, Germany situation when we went to to uh, to Hamburg, we saw a lot of things and it was very, very interesting. And for us, it's interesting to know uh, what other countries are working at in the bed ecosystem. So, yes, of course, we have we have learned a lot of this working with you, but it's 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 true that. Our system is very, I don't know, um, not as strict, but um, the steps are very well well designed and we work hard on it. Yeah, it works for you. So Yes, it works yes, for it you, works so for you don't us. need to adapt it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I want to say that uh, we have learned a lot things barbara for example it was interesting to see your model when you explain us the model in netherlands because it's another point of view of how you see a prior research and uh, how you work for me the most important thing is to understand how the other regions of europe are working for example the ppp the theme it's different here and it's interesting because uh, here we are focusing in doing projects with teachers and in Europe is, mm, I don't know how to say it, uh, it's more focused in students. So I think that uh, it's uh, a good way to see different type of uh, applied research methods uh, and the point of views are different and this is for me the most richest thing. Uh, many times we are focused only in teachers and now I'm thinking more than once uh, about the students when I work in, with them, how they could be involved in this type of project. So uh, I think that it's going to be a good way to progress in applied research. And only one thing, I think that the best way for working is like Henning said uh, before, uh, you answer to the questionnaire and then we will have like a previous time in your, well, when you are going to speak uh, to more, uh, the most important thing is that uh, we are going to forget now in vacation everything. <laughs> and when we are in with the next step uh, is the best way to start it because we will refresh what we have done and then we will see uh, what Henning is going to tell us. So I think that uh, is the best way. And thank you very much for being here. Yes, I think it's very recognizable for us. I put you a little bit on the spot saying 
I'm sorry if I did that, but it's for saying what did you learn? But the same is, goes for catapults because we also have our way of working and it's hard to adapt it based on what we learned, even though we learned a lot. But now we are, they were already in the process of translating our PPP system to an international version, and there we take it into account. But to say we changed the Dutch part, is I don't see that that's going to happen. <laughs> like you, you know, you take a Guna works for you. I mean, you're not going to change that so much, even though you learned a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, Barbara, in our case, for example, the students uh, are not working, but I think that in the future they must work. I don't know how to, it's like a big change for us because yes, all the competencies, uh, it's going to be different. So uh, it's the first step. I could understand that yes. it's difficult, but we have to change our minds and continue working on it because uh, it's going to be so important. Uh, well, you, you have seen it, the example with Amaya today with Bronnie Mac. She wasn't a student and she started working and she continued student and being a, yes. a student. So, so this applied research um, could start with the students and then continue with teachers. I don't know. We have to think something new, I think. Yeah, but I think it will be like a circle. You know, now we go to see what we can do to extrapolate internationally. And then when that goes to fly, we will adapt the national part again. I think that's yeah. a it's a circle to make somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the most. Uh, I, th I think that is the most uh, difficult uh, time now. So yeah. be patient. <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing today. Very nice. Okay, so then if uh, there is no other comment, that's that's it. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank, bye. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye bye.